Hey, <laughs> divers. Alec Pierce Scuba Tech Tips once again. Now, this uh, tech tip for some of the older divers, you don't think it's pretty goofy. But, you know, for newer divers who don't really know about flags and floats and the ins and outs of it, just be patient, okay? There might be something in here for you all to learn. But anyway, flags and floats. Now, flags and floats have been around since the dawn of diving. The dawn of diving. I like that. That's a good saying. Anyway, uh, I started diving in 1958. 1958, yes. Um, and uh, we had a flag and float. Darn right. We're supposed to have. We knew we had to have one. So we went and got an inner tube, just an ordinary black inner tube. And uh, we had tied a, tied a stick onto it, uh, a, a, a wooden stick, a broomstick handle, and probably, as I recall. And I made up a dive flag. We actually didn't have a, a true dive flag until the early 60s, but we made up a flag. I think it was red. And then soon after that, the dive flag came out, and, and uh, we had a real dive flag. And that was it, inner tube. I tied a rope to it, and it was great. Yeah, I drove, did a lot of diving in, in, uh, in uh, the Fenland Channel, which was a very narrow uh, channel with very high walls, limestone walls, went pretty quickly, and boats went up and down that channel, but it was quite narrow, so I had to have some kind of a float so that I could get to the surface of being run over by a boat. And that really is the reason for a flag and float, is to mark where you are underwater. So if you have a flag and a float, and you go out into the water, and you stay reasonably close to it, I mean, it makes sense for you to stay reasonably close. They usually say within 100 feet of the flag and float and underwater, and you total on behind you. Uh, then uh, boaters and other people who know that there's something down there. Uh, boaters, uh, <clears throat> and I, I boat, uh, boaters aren't uh, sometimes the brightest people in the world. Uh, uh, how can I put this? Well, they don't, they don't learn about flags and floats. If you're a scuba diver, you learn about dive flags. If you're a boater, well, you learn about the dive flags. So they don't know what a flag. I've actually had my flag and float out, and a boater's come zooming over in his boat to take a look at it to see what it is. You see? So even with a flag and float, you still have to exercise a little bit of common sense. And don't be in places where boaters are going to bump into it for sure and, and, and where you're causing other problems. But the flag and float can be very useful for many, many reasons. The primary reason is to mark where you are. You can use it to mark you know, wrecks and so on. You don't have to tow with you all the time. Many, many times we'd have a flag and float. We would use it to protect us a little bit while we swam out underwater to a shipwreck. Then once we got to the shipwreck, we tied the flag and float to the shipwreck. You see? Then we could explore the entire shipwreck all around. And when we were finished, we'd come back to the flag and float, untie it, and go back to shore. So uh, it's not cumbersome at all. Uh, it can be very, very useful. Now, generally speaking, of course, we're talking about you diving with your dive buddy. We're not talking about organized dive charters down south. You don't need a flag and float there. Uh, the dive masters, the boat charter, they take care of safety. They have a flag on the boat. And usually you're diving in areas where, where dive flags are respected and people know diving is going on and everything else. But if you're diving on your own, if you're diving on the Great Lakes or you're diving offshore in California or, or in Florida and on, on your own off the, off the you know, northeast shore, places like that, you and your buddy or a small group, you should have a flag and float. Okay? Well, so, now this one interesting is old. This is very old. You can see this old dive flag I have on here. This is my own flag and float. I guess it's time to replace it. This is from an old dive store called the Wet Shop that I owned about 20 years ago. Big dive store. And this is, a, this is actually an inner tube. Yeah, you look inside, you see it's an inner tube. <laughs> and uh, so this is just a, a fancier version. We had this nice nylon cover for the inner tube. It has a mesh bottom. And it sits on the surface, has handles on it, so you can grab it, use it for support when you come to the surface. You can actually put things in here, and all you can put stuff in here, like beer, uh, um, stuff you want to keep cool, or uh, fish, lobsters, and so on. It's really pretty handy. This has been around, around for a long time. I think you can still buy these. They're pretty handy. You put a nice long rope on it, maybe 30 or 40 feet of line on it. This is a really strong line. and use it to tie off down at the bottom. You notice this, this uh, neat uh, orange holder. This is actually designed so that you can put your arms through here, you see, and you can t tug some along and tug this along on your arm and have your flag and float up above you, and it'll tuck you inside when it's not being used. And the flag, as well, with its, re with its uh, rod, pops off. It's got a special clip that was on the inner tube, and that pops off when you're not using it, and you tuck that in there, and away you go. It just sticks in the back of your car. Now, one downside to this is that it's pretty bulky. If you have a truck, a pickup truck or something, and there's a group of you, that's not a problem. But see, it's pretty bulky, you know, so, so that's the only downside to it. It's not, not terribly expensive, and this is a, a good example of a very, very good heavy-duty flag and float with an inner tube. One minor problem you face these days is finding an inner tube. 
It's actually not that easy anymore. You have to go to an automotive supply store. They don't carry them in the hardware stores anymore. Not that many cars use inner tubes. Now, in order to use that, you need to have a dive flag. And you can still buy dive flags. That's pretty easy. Any dive store will have a dive flag standard 20 inch. I don't know how they settle on 20 inch, but it seems to be the standard size for dive flags. 20 inch dive flag. And I don't need to explain what a dive flag is to you. I'm pretty sure. Hopefully not. A dive flag looks like this red with a white stripe. Uh, this actually has proportions. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, it actually has proper proportions. This white stripe is supposed to be one unit. What does that mean? Well, what it means is if this is three units across, meaning if say it was three feet, then this would be one unit in width. So this would be one foot. Yeah. If this is two units across, two units, we'll call it two feet, then this would be one. No, it'd be a smaller unit. Anyway, it is actually proportions in this. And uh, there you go. There's the tip of the dive flag. Now, this particular one you can fly from the mast. If you're diving from your boat, you can fly it from the mast. And it has slots on the arm and on the sleeve. So you can actually put rods in there to hold it up so it stays out, even if it's not windy. I mean, a flag is supposed to be used when it's windy, right? If it's not windy, you still want people to see the dive flags. You'll have to figure that out. But let me show you a couple of of uh, individual diver or dive buddy flags and floats that work really, really well. Here's one example. Now, this is pretty, pretty handy. It's not big, but it floats very, very high because it's a plastic ball, essentially. Of, and when it's full of air, it floats very high in the water. It doesn't sink down. It floats right up like this. So even though it's not terribly big, it actually stays, it's quite, quite visible. And you can see that on the top, there's a, there's a rod that sticks in there and there's a flag that comes out of that. And, and you just blow it up and stick it in there. Now it's kind of unique because <clears throat> in the bottom, they have a second chamber down here and you can put some water in the bottom. This is some in it now. <laughs> water in the bottom, which gives it a bit of weight. And then you tie your line onto this, onto this rubbery ring on the bottom and off you go. Okay, now these you can carry in your dive bag. There it is folded up, it's nothing. There's nothing. So you can stick this, keep it in a bag of some sort, stick this in the bottom of your dive bag, and you got it all the time. If you don't need it, just leave it down there. And all of a sudden, ah, we should have a dive, look at the boats, we should have a dive flag out there. Oh, I got one. Blow it up and off you go. I right, sketch it was really handy. Now one thing I'm not crazy about is that this one has parts, has pieces to it. There's the float, and there's the rod, and there's the flag. Well, I'm the same as everybody else, and it's just a matter of time before I lose one of those pieces. So here's another flag <clears throat> float. That's pretty good. This is made by Cressy, very well-known company, and it's kind of interesting because it's smaller. I know it's smaller, but remember this is for one diver, and, and uh, just to sort of mark where you are or mark a shipwreck. So you blow this one up, that's all one piece. So you blow the float up, and you blow up, and when you blow the float up, it blows up the uh, the support, and it blows up the flag, the whole thing, and they have strings attached to the bottom. Now, once again, this one's tiny. Look at this, little wee tiny thing. Stick it in the bottom of your dive bag and forget about it, and there it is. I want to point out one thing that I've learned the hard way, because we have sold quite a few of these. And divers will come in and they'll say, "Gosh, you know, Alec, I bought this from me a while ago, and I've used it a few times." And I put the string through. And I tied the string off, and it's actually torn right through that rubber. This happened many, many times. And so far, these dive flag manufacturers, float manufacturers, haven't been able to fix the problem. And, but the trouble is that if you use a, a fairly fine line like this stuff here, this is quite coarse. It's not big, but it's quite coarse. If you put that through the ring, as the flag bobs on the surface of the water, that string pulls back and forth, and it literally saws right through that rubbery, plasticky ring in the bottom saws right through it. And there's no way to fix it, no way that I've found anyway. So if you do get one like this, or if you have one like this, check and be sure that that's not happening to yours. But all you really need to do is get a fairly thick rope. Get a piece of nylon rope, maybe about a quarter of an inch diameter. Put a bit, just a short piece, just get about a foot long, okay? And put that through that hole, get it through that hole, it'll almost fill the hole, and just tie it in a loop so you have a nice six inch loop of soft nylon rope. You follow me? And now hook your other line onto that. And it won't saw through this. I've seen it happen many, many times. And if it does saw through there, I'm afraid there's no way that I know to fix it. You can't glue it. It'll just saw through again. So there's a little tip for you if you want to keep your dive float and float and flag in good shape. So there's some good examples of flags and floats. <clears throat> I wanted to point out this neat little device. It's only a couple of bucks. Just like the earlier one, it's supposed to go on your arm, you see, and it holds about, well, it'll hold 100 feet of line. It has 50 feet on here, 50 feet of line, it goes on there and it ties around. There's even little 
the little area here to hook the line in to hold it steady. These are cheap plastic, but very, very tough. You can pick up the line at any hardware store, or, you know, for an extra five bucks it comes with it. So this is a really good idea too for towing your flag and float along behind you. Okay. Now I'll show you one more. This is my favorite. This is what I suggest if you can that you try to find and use. Let me show you this flag and float. First of all, <clears throat> here's what it looks like in the bottom of your dive bag. Still very compact, look very, very small, a little thicker maybe, and the rods on there. And these rods are kind of neat because they're all joined together. There's several rods in there, but they're joined together. So you have the float itself and you have the rods. But what do you get? <laughs> Watch this. Ah, there's a flag and float. Look at that. There's a good old flag and float. This actually reminds me of the old fashioned one that we used years and years ago with the inner tube. It's almost the same. It's like a big blow up inner tube here. Bright yellow. And this bright yellow really shows up well. It's got diver below written on it, which can't hurt at all, you know. It has a couple of chambers as well. There's two or three different chambers here. So even if this did get a hole in it, it would still stay inflated. So that's pretty good, huh? It also has. <clears throat> That same rubbery ring on the bottom. Don't forget what I told you. you. Get a soft piece of rope like this rope is nice and soft. Make a loop, then tie it. It also has on the side, look at this. So if you come up to it, you can grab it and hang on to it. So a couple of divers can hang on on opposite sides and talk to each other on the surface. And so you get it blown up nice and hard. And then I showed you earlier those rods. Well, there they are. A deer look at that. That's pretty slick, huh? This is this uh, flag and float is uh, sold by Innovative Scuba. Any decent dive store would have a good quality flag and float. And even though it's very, very good, very visible, very big, very tough, and certainly does a good job, it's not terribly expensive. You should be able to get one of these for $30, $40 in that area. One other nice thing that I like about this <clears throat> particular flag and float is that it's got a hole in the middle for storing stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you got a cold can of pop, or 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 if a fish, or maybe some other stuff that you need, you can stick it in there. Camera, whatever you want to keep on the surface, you can stick it in there. And it's pretty secure in there. So there's a there's what I think is a really really good flag and float if you need one. And again, it wouldn't take this traveling. If you're going on a dive trip, you don't need to take a dive flag and float with you. But if you're diving here and you know wherever you are locally, uh, I'm getting comments from from uh, from viewers of these tech tips from all over the world. So I can no longer say the Great Lakes or North America. Gosh, you could be diving off the coast of uh, England, or you could be in Australia, you could be uh, all over. I've, I've had comments coming from the Mediterranean, from Spain. Uh, it's crazy. So, th but this still applies anywhere you're going. A flag and float like this for surface support, in case you're really, really tired, uh, or if you got caught in a current, you got something to hang on to, to mark a wreck, to help you get out, protect you from boats. So many reasons to have a flag and float, and they're so terribly inexpensive. Now you have some ideas of what's available and how it can be used. I hope there's something in here that's been useful to you, even for you old guys that have been using inner tubes like me for uh, a long, long time. These new uh, flags and floats are pretty good. I hope that was useful to you guys, and I'll try to find some more good ideas from all your comments. Love them. Keep them coming. Alec Pierce Scuba. Tech tips.